Hey guys, John here. Today we're going to discuss the NFPA 72, the National Fire Alarm Code Book, the 2007 edition, and see how can we use this book during our study and also during the actual NICET exam. First, I'm going to show you how I, I organized my book, and then we're going to go through a typical questions and see how can we find the answers using this book. Before, before I go into the content of this today's video, let me just make clear about NICET policy regarding books and references that you can bring with you to the exam room. Now, this is one of the one of the book that's permitted to be in every single level of the certification from level one, level two, level three, and level four. So you'll have this book with you at every single exam you take at NICET. Our well, NICET policies regarding books is one, you can tab your books like I did here. However, the tabs should be permanent. Those tabs should be permanent. You cannot just put a sticky note and there and just a bunch of sticky notes, then you can take them easily and rearrange them. That's a no no. Your your tabs should be part of the page actually. See how it is. And what I use for my tabs, basically I used a label from Avery. This is Avery, and it's Avery model number five four three zero. And it comes in here it is, I don't know if you can see it clearly or not, but it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14 label on a sheet. This is how I divided my book. I start with chapter 3. Basically, I divide it into chapters. Chapter 1 is the administration chapter, which I don't think that's going to be significant to our test. And chapter 2 is basically reference books. So we start with chapter 3. And we go down to chapter 11. Then what we, we have what we call the annexes. Annex A is the explanatory material which expands on the actual codes. And Annex B is the engineering guide for automatic fire detector spacing. Then Annex C is the wiring diagrams and guide for testing fire alarm circuits. And... Uh, Annex E is the mass notification systems. And finally, we have the index. The index is the most important part of our book, which we're going to be using it a lot. So please pay attention to this index part. We're going to be using this in our study and the exams. Now, everything will become clear to you once we take an actual uh, question and and go go over how to find the answer during the our exam with using this book with the tabs and the and those tabs in the bottom also nice policy is that you can highlight your book like i did over here but please please don't go crazy highlighting every single section Otherwise, the whole book will be important. It will be red, yellow, and then and, and green. What I did is I just highlighted the, the important the, the sections, the main sections of the chapter with yellow, and highlighted the subsections of that main area with a different color. See, they don't. I don't have that much highlighting. I just just few highlights. Your book should be bonded, like solid one piece. It cannot be multiple loose pages. If it's loose, it should be in a binder, a three, like three ring binder. That everything is complete. Also, your book should be shouldn't have any handwritten notes on it like this this is not allowed and again your stickies your, your your labels should be permanent and not loose not like this 
otherwise the and i said will take the book from you and you will be left without a book during your exam so let's see how we can implement this book now at a actual test scenario so let's take let's take a question and then and, and let's go over the question so the question is what is the color code for a heat detector rated at 325 degree Fahrenheit a blue b orange c red d uncolored now each question should have a few keywords on it one or more than one keywords by keywords i mean the the important words that will lead you to the answer in this example the important words the keywords i found is heat detector and color code so we jump to the index We search for heat detector, first of all, H, H, heat detector, heat detector. The next keyword is color code, color coding. And we see the answer is in five, six, two, one, five, six. So we open, we go to section five using our tab and we go down to five, six, two, one over here, five, six, two, one. Then heat sensing fire detectors of the fixed temperature or weight component spot type shall be classified as a temperature of operation and marked with the color code in accordance with table 56211. So here is the table. We said was the 325. We go for 325. Here is 325. 325 is color red. So coming back to the question, the answer is C red. And we find that in section 56211 in NFPA 72, 2007 edition. Easy, isn't it? Now, keep in mind, not every single question in NYSET is going to be easy like this. There are two types of questions on NYSET. The first one is the simple, straightforward questions like we've we seen, we seen in this video. And the other type is what we call a time consuming question or research intensive question. Bear in mind that you have one minute almost on any level exam, you have almost one minute per question to find the answer for that question. So our goal is to answer as much simple question as possible and then go to the research intensive questions and try to find the answer for those questions. Those research intensive questions that are in this form, like which of the following is true or which of the following is acceptable? See the answer? You need to research every single answer to find if that's the case, if that, that statement is true or that statement is not true. And that will definitely take you more than one minute. So for now, skip those, just flag them. You can always come back to those questions. Just make sure you flag them in your computer and then come back to those questions once you're done with your simple ones and, and tackle those questions. I hope this was helpful. And please, please let me know what else you need to learn about that will help you in studying for your NYSET exam. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to check my website at www.firealarmcertification.com. You can track my progress for the NYSET exam in that website. So until then, happy studying and cheers.